And we're live. Hi, crafters. Welcome to This Crafty Life Live, the show where two crafters spend an hour feeding their passion to all things crafty and bring you along for the fun. So let me introduce our host today. First, we have May May of May May Made It. I'm sure you recognize her from her YouTube channel where she does everything from paper crafting to upcycle projects and things like that. She also designs a full line of clear stamps and has a stamp club. For those of you that uh, love art journaling, uh, May May has a special group that art journals uh, scripture called Hide His Word in My Heart. Oh, and did I mention that she is a self-proclaimed Periscope addict? Say hello to May May. Yeah. All right, and next up, Melody Lane. I'm sure you recognize her from her YouTube channel as well, where she does some great projects uh, and tutorials and some really fun hauls. Melody is also a Cricut product expert, so if you have any type of Cricut questions, you can get the answer from her. She designs her own line of digital paper as well, and she is known as the queen of the giveaways, and she hosts an amazing monthly giveaway on her Patreon page. So everybody say hello to Melody. Now let me introduce our wonderful moderator for the show. This is the one and only Vinny from Vinny's Vittles and my other half. Welcome, Vinny. You should have said better half. Nope, other half. All right. <laughs> Thanks, ladies. By the way, uh, there will be links uh, to all of the social sites that we are a part of. Uh, below so you can follow us around everywhere we go on all the different social media sites. Now for all of our viewers, there is a chat that's going on live right now. So we welcome you guys to uh, post questions and the ladies will be answering those throughout the show today. So tell us about the show today, ladies. Well, on today's show, we're going to interview Ken Oliver. He's the creator of Color Bursts and the best ever craft mat. And we'll also be making a warm winter gift in our crafty corner. We're going to take time at the end of the show to chat with you guys. So be sure to get into the chat and start typing away. Vince is going to be moderating that, writing down your questions and comments so we can share those. And we'll also talk to you guys in between the segments of the show. So be sure to be chatty Cathy's. Yes. And make sure you look out for our special secret word for our giveaway for today that will be told to you sometime during the show so you got to stick around for that one yeah because Ken has some amazing giveaways so yes, you have to watch his segment okay but first we have some crafty news to share with you guys um let's see Jennifer McGuire has announced an awesome project we can all get involved in. It's called Share Handmade Kindness. There is a different challenge each week in the month of November starting today and she is having giveaways. Also Hero Arts has made a special stamp set for this kindness event. The event was created to support the kindness campaign. All the details are on her blog and the links to the show, the links in the show notes on the replay of this video. So once this video is done, we're going to put all the links you need to for the kindness campaign in the description of the video. Um, and go give her some comments and let her know you heard it from our show. We'd love to have her as a guest on our show. Yeah, and that's an awesome project. I'm glad that she announced that yesterday. And so I was so glad that I caught that yesterday morning for our show today because what she's it's given us the opportunity, all of us that love to make crafts and give them to people what we never have enough people to give them to, it's really given us that opportunity. And it's just a fun project to be a part of. So go check it out. It's, I think it's going to be huge. and It'll be fun to be a part of it. Yeah, it's really cool. And like Mel said, be sure to tell her that you heard about it on This Crafty Life Live with Mel and May May. <laughs> um, that'll be cool. And um, crop to it. The tickets went on sale yesterday. If you don't know what Crop to it is, it is a retreat between hosted by myself and Crafts by Two, Ken and George. And we did one in October, and it was extremely successful. And 
The tickets for our March event went on sale yesterday at 2 p.m. and we only have three tickets left. So That's amazing. That is absolutely amazing that y'all only have three tickets left. Yeah, they actually, I think we sold, we had six left after the first hour. So awesome. we were frantic. We had the people that were that attended last year. They wanted to be able to have first dibs, but we said no. Otherwise, nobody else would ever be able to get in. <laughs> so we have a group on Facebook called Crop to It Family because after our last event, we're just like family now. And so they were all frantic. Within they were all ready at their computers in seconds, trying to get their tickets. So um, we only have three left this time. Tell us what you do at the Crop to It. Um, this time it'll be a Thursday through a Sunday, and we really, it's not just scrapbooking, like, some people don't scrapbook at all, it's like a crop, but we also have classes, we do other things, uh, we have different sponsors that have lots of giveaways, maybe Ken could sponsor and give something to the swag bag. <laughs> oh, yeah, that would be great. That's the way to call them out a lot. Last year, and we Cricket also did. They gave us two Cricket Explorers to give away. We had all kinds of giveaways and classes. We also went on a field trip. To, we took a bus to Michael's and Joanne's because everybody knows how George and I like to go shopping for crafts. We like took a bus, and this time we're going to – we have a lot of things planned. It, it was so much fun. We have a video showing – um, a periscope from the last event, and then our prize giveaway also. That's awesome. I enjoyed watching from afar. I couldn't be there, but I enjoyed watching it. Yeah, it, it was really, it really went well, and everyone was so happy, and it was fun. We uh, brought a lot of things for you to use there, too. Like, we had the mink machine. We had a heat press, and everybody was d given... Um, Iron-on vinyl, HTV vinyl from Expressions Vinyl, everybody got that. So everybody was using the heat press, and a lot of people learned how to use things for the first time. And we made sure everybody left knowing everything they wanted to know before they left. I think it was awesome. And I, I'm really excited that you guys almost sold out. I know that's rough, but the next three people to jump in and grab tickets can be there. And it's in Palmyra? Is that how you say it, New York? Yeah, Palmyra, New York. That's awesome. And Blitzy also gave us some news for today. They're getting ready to launch their Holiday Hub. I'm not sure if I'm saying it right. It's DIY Hub, which is scheduled for today. And they're going to shut out from the rooftops as soon as it's live. They're trying to get it live today. This includes daily entries to win a pair of golden scissors. If you win a pair of golden scissors, you're entered into the grand prize of $1,000 to spend for craft supplies at Blitzy. Wow. Yeah, isn't that awesome? That's awesome. And they are also randomly placing the golden scissors into orders all the way through Cyber Monday. Wait, say that again because I was talking. <laughs> They're putting um randomly putting placing golden scissors in orders all the way through Cyber Monday. So if you place an order between now and Cyber Monday, you might have a chance to win the golden scissors. And then, then you will be in a chance to win the thousand dollar prize. So the more you buy, buy every day, right? <laughs> you have a better chance. But also, um, they have daily giveaways leading up to the Blitzy Black Friday weekend. New prizes every single day. Each week is a Black Friday weekend sneak peek. That and is incredible. I cannot. I'm gonna go shop as soon. I'm not even joking. I'm going on Blitzy as soon as we're done. All right, but you have to wait till we're done. I am going to wait. Everybody else has to wait, too. Do not go now. Wait. Yeah. No going now. I don't think it's live yet. Blitzy is in our chat. Blitzy Crafts was in there, so they can uh, tell more about it, too. But we'll also have some links to it below in our video later. Awesome. Well, uh, I have a little in place. Is, is that all of, the, of your news? No, nope. they still have in place to enter the Blitzy's Ultimate Holiday Crafter where you'll upload your holiday craft projects and cards for a chance to win a Cameo 2 and $500 to spend on craft supplies. Okay, so explain that again. They can upload their crafts. 
Yeah, they can upload their crafts, projects, and cards for a chance to win a Cameo 2 and $500 to spend on craft supplies. So you can probably head over to Blitzy.com and maybe their blog. They have all their links on their website. And we'll try to get that info from them and put it in the description of the video after the show. Hey, guys. Um, Blitzy Crafts commented and uh -huh. said that you can enter for the drawing for that golden pair of scissors on their website without a purchase. So that'd be good for everybody to know. Okay. Thank you, Blitzy. That's really awesome. That's super cool of you. But she did say it's not live yet, so don't go there yet. No, right. don't leave. Don't make it live after the show, Blitzy. <laughs> And this show is not sponsored by Blitzy. <laughs> we actually have no sponsors. No, we don't have any sponsors. We just want to give you the news of what news we got. And we know our viewers love giveaways. That's right. No sponsors. We're not being paid for any of these sponsors or anything like that. This is just fun for us. You guys know us like that. So, my turn? I think so. I have something interesting. Melody, how much online shopping do you do during Christmas and the holidays? Almost all of it. <laughs> Me too, just about. I like to. I like to shop early because you can, you know, you can do all your mommy stuff during the day and all your crafty stuff during the day and then sit down at midnight and do your shopping, which I think is super cool. So I thought this, I was online the other night and I was looking around and I found this um, article about Pinterest. And I think, and Melody, you say it because we say it different. Pinterest? Yeah. Pinterest? 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 You say Pinterest, and I say Pinterest. That's the southern girl in me. <laughs> but I found this article, and I thought it was super cool. It talks about that, you know, now Pinterest is letting you shop at Pinterest. Like, they'll have links that are you can purchase them right there, which I think is super cool. But this is some statistics. I said that. I got it out. About the kinds of things that people pin and purchase from Pinterest. I thought this was so interesting. It's called Joy to the Pin, and it says... 38 million people have saved holiday pins. 38 million people. Isn't that wild? 43% of holiday pins are from millennials. That surprises me too. Then, two. this is one that gets me right here. 2 million men have pinned for the holidays. 2 million men. 50% wow. um, increase in the number of holiday pins each year. So since... since Pinterest has been around. They've had a 50% increase every year of holiday pins. And you know what sparked this was? I love this time of year when my Pinterest feed starts getting full of the holiday stuff. It's my favorite thing, so that's why I started looking. 170 million of those pins were home decor pins. 170 wow. million. 50 million are fashion. That kind of surprised me. I thought there'd be more fashion pins. Um, 42 million were food. That really shocked me. I thought they'd People be a lot. like their food. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but here's my favorite. Three million are ugly sweater pins. <laughs> I love that one. 92 million holiday gift pins. And it says early planners look for creative gift sets and stocking stuffers as early as September 1st, which that doesn't shock me. Now it seems like we're starting in July. And then um, what's left? Oh, here's a good one. 87% of people who pin on Pinterest purchase something they've pinned. Wow. 87%. That I think that's huge numbers considering. I mean, I pin a whole bunch of stuff, but I do end up going and looking for it and buying it, especially for the holidays. Yeah, that just shows how important Pinterest is. So as crafters, especially if you're trying to build your crafty business, make sure you're putting your items out there on Pinterest because it's just... It's just free at this point. It's free advertising for your stuff. I try to pin everything, but I'm kind of lax on it. Mel, you're really good at it, aren't you? Yeah, I've been trying to pin, like, especially on my videos and stuff. And I get a lot of people repinning. My Pinterest followers have really grown quickly in the last probably six months. Mine is decent. I don't, I don't remember exactly. I want to say I'm just over 2,000, but I just am really lax. But I'm trying to be better this holiday, though, because... You know, now's the time to be doing that, so pin those goodies. Okay. Hey, Vinny, you got any chat? Uh, yeah, quite a bit going on today, actually. Um, 
Amanda asked earlier in the chat, since you guys are now doing a live show, is there any chance that there will be a TV show in the future uh, where <laughs> you guys do crafty stuff? Well, if the network calls. <laughs> yeah, we would all jump on board, right? That's right. And um, Melody Ann asked earlier uh, if there are going to be other crops in other areas or other parts of the country. We are trying to work on that. Uh, the expense is huge everywhere else, it seems to be, for food and stuff. Because if we go to another area, we'd like to be able to have a lot more people. And you have to have everything catered. And we have really been searching for a hotel that can accommodate us. But we haven't found it so far. Um, some of them, they want to, because we pay for the food for the event, and they want to charge us $22 a person for breakfast, which is just a continental breakfast, not even a hot breakfast, and have to pay each person for Wi-Fi per day, and that's just not acceptable for us. We'd have to charge too much. Our hotel now, you get free breakfast, and you get free Wi-Fi, and they do everything for us. Actually, the owner of the hotel came in during our last crop on Saturday night and says, hey, anybody want ice cream? They let us go to their little store and pick out any ice cream bar or anything we wanted. They're like really accommodating and we are looking for more places. If anyone knows, let me know. Uh, so far as I'm uh, looking around on the chat, it looks like we have visitors from 4, 8, 12, about 15 states represented so far. Wow. And three countries. So that's wow. pretty cool. What countries are represented? Uh, we have folks from Canada, folks from Kentucky, and of course folks from the good old U.S. of A. Did you say Kentucky? You didn't mean Kentucky. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it said the U.K., so I don't think it was referring to Kentucky. No, but you said <laughs> So we have U.K., Canada, and where was the other one? Uh, here in the U.S. Sweet. Welcome in, guys. Any more questions? Uh, that's all that people have been posting. Of course, everybody, oh, there's another one from Michigan, so add another state there. We didn't have Michigan before. Um, so, but uh, those are the only two questions that people have posted so far. Um, looks like we got a lot of guests, though. Awesome. Okay, so time to introduce Ken Oliver. Okay, let me hey, go how to are my you? notes. <laughs> How you doing? Um, okay, our special guest today is Ken Oliver. Not only is he the inventor of color burst pigment powders, but the best ever craft mat and a lot of other products. Ken is an accomplished artist who specializes in watercolor, paper crafting, altered arts, mixed media, book binding, and craft projects. Welcome, Ken, to the show. Hey, thanks. <laughs> Hey, I'm super excited to be here. I was so excited when you said yes, you'd be on the show. I have been obsessed with you for a few months now. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> I've seen you, know, you on you periscopes and love your products. Thank you. You mentioned stocking stuffers. These are the best stocking stuffers. Color yes, burst. they are. A great stocking stuffer. I love those. I have all 12 of your colors. Aren't they fun? Yeah. Now, is everybody in the group familiar with Color Burst? I don't think they all are. Oh, wow. That's really cool. Um, I have a few questions for you first. How okay. How long have you been crafting, Ken? You know, uh, probably all my life. Um, I grew up in the country. And when you grow up in the country, you learn to make things, right? Uh -huh. And so basically, like, I've just crafted all my life. I have crafty parents. And uh, when you live in the country, you have to learn how to make things. And I also grew up in the 70s, and so, like, my mom was all about recycling and upcycling. So, like, you know, if you gave me a bunch of aluminum pull tabs off of uh, Coke cans, I could probably make you a vest. <laughs> or, <laughs> That's cool. Or, you know, like... Pretty much like um, you make something out of everything that you have on hand. 
Yeah, I think I've made a necklace out of the pull cans from the pop cans. And back in the 70s, they were a little different than they are now. Yeah, yeah that's true. Um, how many different products do you sell? You know, um, if I looked at the catalog, there are probably about 90 items in the catalog. Oh, wow. These range, like, over a bunch of different, cat, you know, categories. Like, there's Color Burst, and that's amazing. It's it's really intense pigment uh, watercolor, mm -hmm. but it's in a powder form. Um, these are also really amazing. These are mixed-media mat boards, and we have them in 6x6 six six and 12x12s. I also have them uh, that are 8x10s with a, hello, a little cutout. So you can basically uh, decorate this or, or craft it any way you want. It has watercolor paper on the front of it, so you can use color bursts on it. You can put your scrapbook paper on it. And uh, the eight and a half by or the eight by twelve or eight by tens have a four by six photo cutout. So you can actually use your scrapbook embellishments and make this into a you know like a layout, but something that you take off the off the page and it becomes home decor. Oh, They're that's really cool. awesome. I've never and, seen anything uh, like that. Oh, you know, like, it's beautiful because it has watercolor paper on the front of it. Yeah. And it's, it's a high-density board, so when it gets wet, it doesn't warp. So it's, um, it's very thick. I don't know how you can see how thick it is, but it's very thick. And um, it's specially designed for, for wet media. So if you wanted to paint on it or uh, use color bursts, you know, whatever you want to do, this makes a great base. And it's thinner than a canvas, but yet it's high-density mat board. Cool. So it's, it's awesome. Um, this you've got to see. This is called a Click It ink pad. Have you heard of that? I did just hear that. I was. I just saw some videos on that. I've never seen them in person or anything. Okay. I was like, I thought that was the coolest thing. I've never seen anything like it. It is the coolest thing to use it. All you do is open it like that. You see, and then it clicks open. Let me get so you can see. It clicks open so that your ink pad comes out. Mm -hmm. So it's like completely self-contained. Yeah, and, and I saw you can ink the edges of your paper really good with that. Yeah, so since the um, head is kind of like on a, a pivoting edge, whenever you uh, ink edges, it glides right along. You see how it like glides like that? And then you, you get ink on your edge. It's hard to see, um, but not on the front. So like I can just ink all these edges like that, and everything's nice, and it looks like a fit, nice finished edge, but yet then there's no ink on the front of your project. Yeah, I saw that in some videos. I like. I think I need to get one of each color. <laughs> we have, I think, 12 colors now. So cool. they're super fun colors. And uh, the pad itself is a micro fine. It's almost like it's like ultra suede. So whenever you ink up your stamps, you get super fine ink coverage. And then when you stamp, you get a super fine image. It's very, it's a really innovative little product. And because they're so compact, they travel well. So anybody coming out to your crop, yeah, crop event can bring that. Super super compact. And then even for storage, like in your craft room, if you wanted to put a hook on your table, you could like just hook all these on, um, you know, like a cup hook, and they're all right there. Cool. Uh, these these are good for, if anybody has dexterity issues like with their hands and have trouble with the big ink pads, these are so simple to use because basically if you can, if you can pinch, you know, like you can, you can use this. Awesome. Very good. And where can they um, find your catalog with all your products? We don't, my catalog is on my website. Uh, it's, my website is Ken's World in Progress. Um, so I have a whole page on my website with a catalog on it. But also like, like my Facebook pages too, I've got one that's called Ken Oliver Crafts, and then also I've got a friend page too. But uh, like my Facebook pages, and um, and that way I share information and I share projects all the time too. Awesome. Um, where did you get the idea to create the color burst? Well, that's something um, I've not seen. So I'm thinking, how did you come up with the idea? I'm thinking there was a need for it. Well, you know the colored paint pigments in powder form have been around forever, right? They've been uh -huh. around forever. You've been probably the first uh, kind of pigments that cave people use whenever they 
painted on walls, you know, like they discovered that they could make pigment out of rocks and rust and things like, you know, iron oxide. And, um, and tempera paints. Everybody's used tempera paints. And I don't know if you've ever, like, painted water on uh, the paper before and thrown tempera paints on there, but you kind of get the same thing. So I like that idea of pigment um, in a powder form to create with. What makes Color Burst so unique is its tiny applicator bottle. And um, the applicator bottle has a very fine um, applicator nozzle. Can you see that? Yeah. So uh, this, this powder is really like micro fine. And trust me, whenever you buy Color Burst and you use Color Burst, you're going to see that like one little bottle goes a super long way. But what this little applicator bottle allows you to do is really control how much pigment you put out whenever you uh, tap it onto your paper. So like that's the really cool innovative thing there is that we've got this really nice applicator tip that lets you uh, control and direct like where pigment goes on your paper. And there are a lot of groovy things you can make with color bursts. I mean, whether you want to use it for watercolor painting. I have examples. Can I hold up examples? Sure. All right. Um, if you want to use it for watercolor painting, you can do that. Oh, it's over here. Sorry. Oh, it's not over here. <laughs> Hello. Well, oh, I was playing with the color burst the other day, and I didn't have my paper towels real close to me, but I had a napkin. So right. I just, like, went over my project with this napkin. Right. And then I opened it up, and look at that. Look how cool that is. No, oh, that's amazing. And, you know, you could uh, die cut that with floral dyes. Yeah. And make beautiful die cut flowers. So you can yes. use color This burst. is one napkin I wasn't going to throw away. <laughs> that's funny. You can use color burst for painting. Here are some paintings that I've done. Wow, that's beautiful. Uh, here's some. I like to do these, like, in demos and classes. Super easy to do. Or uh, you can really just... It's as easy as spritzing and sprinkling on uh, watercolor paper, and you can create beautiful backgrounds. Yeah. So the backgrounds you can cut up to make card bases um, or, you know, parts of scrapbook layouts. If you uh, die cut a piece of color burst paper, it's beautiful because you have that beautiful ombre kind of effect, but it's, um, it's all, you know, something that you've done uh, using color burst. Yeah, and you don't like, have to be an artist to use them. You can even use them with stencils. I did. This oh, was the first time I used them with a stencil, and see how easy that is. You sprinkle it and then spray the stencil with water. Yeah, that's awesome. Here's a stencil piece in one of my journals. Oh wow, and that's beautiful. I could uh, demo a stenciling technique if you want me to. If we've got a little bit of time, I'm not sure how much time you have allotted for me, but I can always uh, demo. Um, Do we have time, what? maybe? I think so. Okay. What's the chat saying? Does the chat want to see it? Go see if there's any questions, Vince. Uh, we've had a few questions. Um, it's no, about team products. I want to know exactly where all they can find them. Um, several folks mentioned that they are available on the Blitzy's uh, site. Um, and I know Ken mentioned that we can get those on his um, from well, his. Uh, website as well. I don't have a retail site. I have a catalog online where you can see it. But what I would recommend is check with your local retailer first. There are lots and lots of retailers all over the world who carry my products. In fact, I think we're in probably close, close to a thousand retail stores in 20 countries. So, so um, ask your retailer if they have them and if they don't, ask them to get them. Yeah, they can order uh, very easily through their uh, distributors, product performers or Contact USA, um, and if anybody, uh, any of the stores are uh, through Collins Group, all the products are available through Collins Group also. I did get mine from Blitzy. Oh, did you? Yeah. I'm going to, like, angle my camera down so you can kind of see, like, what I'm going to do here with, uh, with Color Burst, a quick little demo here. Can you see that all right? We just see you. We don't see a table. You don't see the table? No. Okay. You know, um, I kind of had, to, I MacGyvered my camera a little bit with the rubber band this morning it, it was because uh, my other camera wouldn't come in. Now can you see the table? No. Nope. Oh, really? See. You can see it? Yeah, I can see it. All right. 
So um, I've got a stencil here, and I have one of my mixed media frames, and I'm going to make a really quick stencil project using Color Burst, a stencil, and one of my mixed media frames. And the stencil is beautiful. It's a kind of a oh, that's know, it's almost it's almost like tile. And you're going to be amazed at how fast you can do this kind of project. And um, also so easy that kids can do it. So since it's fall, I'm going to use a warm color palette. I'm going to use a, a lizard and crimson. I'm going to use thal or uh, orange and lemon yellow. And I'll come back and do some accents at the end with some sepia. This is going to be a beautiful, beautiful color palette. There are uh, 12 colors now. We have bright colors, which are your primary colors and secondary colors. Those are kind of like, that's a universal color palette. It has every color in it that you, you know, like, it's your basic color palette. And then um, we also have six others that are warm earth tones. The warm earth tones are really... What, how would you describe them? They're like, they're sexy, they're warm, they're kind of like jewel tones. Uh, they're perfect for fall projects and for Christmas projects. I've kind of got like, here's a little array of them right here. There's lemon ochre and burnt orange. And look, there's Merlot. The Merlot is just gorgeous. Um, and so that color palette is really good for fall projects. Because it's, you know, it's kind of like the fall colors. But I'm going to like keep... I'm applying powder now. I don't know if you can see what I'm doing. I'm basically just uh, tapping color burst on top of my stencil um, so that I and get... It's a dry stencil, right? It's a dry stencil, and my mat, my mat board was dry. So everything about this is dry. I'm going to come in in just a minute and add my water on top of it. And hopefully from where you're sitting, you'll be able to see how that color like bursts to life. And I'm super excited today because we're giving away a full set of color bursts here on the air or on, on the broadcast. It's going to be a full set, 12 colors, for whoever knows the secret word. And I, should, I probably have some more uh, prizes up my sleeve, too, that I'll tell you about in a little bit. So now I've, all I've done is I've tapped color bursts onto my stencil and onto my mat board, and now I've got a sprayer bottle, and I'm going to spray with a very light mist across my stencil and mat board and reveal the color. And okay, so just watch. This is so super cool. Do you see how that color like develops right before your very eyes? Look how cool that is. And then when I take the stencil off, I have a beautiful stenciled project. Beautiful. A bit like, I want to like go back and dry it so that it doesn't run. But look how gorgeous that is. It's like a beautiful watercolor frame that it took me what about 30 seconds to make. Yeah, and you don't have to be an artist to do that. Not at all. Not at all. Let me see. Here's another piece that I've... Um, this is a stencil piece, too. This is on one of the 12 by 12 mat boards. Wow. It's, a, it's a mountain scene. And um, I actually did go back and kind of paint in some of the details with just water. But it's so easy to use and so much fun. Kids love it. That's beautiful. No, so we didn't talk about the craft mat yet either, right? No, so if tell us about your craft mat. I have one on the this way I ordered from Blitzy. <laughs> yeah, it's awesome. And uh, there's some great videos out there on Blitzy and some other sites, like kind of showing what this is. But this is the best ever craft mat. I'm going to tell you why it's the best ever. It's heat safe to 480 degrees. So if you want to use your heat tool, if you want to um, iron on it, any of your, you know, like crafts that you use um, heat, this is perfect. It's durable, it's very, very thick, and it's non-skid. So whenever you use it on your work surface, it's not going to slide around. Likewise, anything that you put on your work surface is not going to slide around. So like any of your paper bits or if you're using little findings or jewelry pieces, they're not going to slide around. It's awesome. And unlike any other craft mat out there, look, you can wad this up. Wow. And then it springs back to life like brand new, so it doesn't crease. It doesn't wrinkle, and it's always brand new. Cleanup is easy. In fact, I've got a lot of stuff on my mat right now. It's very, it's pretty dirty, and um, I'll show you how easy it is to clean up. All I'm going to do is take uh, my spritz bottle like that. I'm going to spritz water over my over my craft mat. Can you see that? So right now I've got like a lot of ink on there, which you know, or not ink. It's color burst, but 
you could pick that up with a tag and save all that and make something. But let's just say I'm in a hurry and I want to clean up. I'm going to take my paper towel and just run that right across there. And every bit of that ink or color burst, because it's good for all wet media, like if you have uh, distress ink on there or acrylic paint, anything. And just like that, it's like brand spanking new. So it really is like it's the best craft mat ever. Whoops. Sorry. It's okay. There we go. Um, Are you going to be coming out with some new colors of Color Burst? Oh, yes. So hang on for that. Uh, I know that already in the hopper, there are going to be six beautiful new shades in January. So that'll take us up to 16 colors of, or sorry, 18 colors of Color Burst plus brown and black. So we'll have. Oh, cool. Um, yeah, we're going to have like 20 in the palette altogether. So it'll be 18 beautiful colors plus brown and black. Awesome. But uh, you got to get the craft mat. Uh, check with your local retailer. Um, it's online. It's in a lot of different places. Blitzy has it, and it really, it really is the best ever craft mat. And um, you know, I showed you how you can wash it, like with just a paper towel and water. Um, since I teach classes all the time, I usually have about 50 craft mats that um, I was like washing them all in the sink, just like rinsing them in the sink. And one day I was like, oh, this is too much. So I took my 50 craft mats and I put them in the washing machine and, and I actually washed them in, in my laundry washing machine and they came out beautifully. Wow. Which is kind of funny. So I've got one of these up for grabs too. This will be one of the prizes that we give away today. Awesome. The best ever craft So that is awesome. Yay. I need one of those craft mats pretty bad. Oh my gosh. And wait till January. Wait till January. Well, I mean, get one now because you're going to love it. But in January, I guess I can go ahead and say this, uh, we're going to release a new one that's bigger that's like a table cover. So it'll actually be like, you know, I don't know it's going to be big enough to cover your table. So many people ask me like, hey, I need to get this, but I need it to be a table cover. I was like, okay, we got it. And so that's, that's going to be incredible. Yeah, I'm excited for that. I need that one. Since, yeah, we have, yeah. since we have you here, I want to encourage you to make a black one. Really? Yes. Oh, yeah. I would love to do one for filming. And a lot of times when I have a lighter background, it messes with my camera and it won't focus oh. very well. So I would love a black one. All right. Well, um, that's I like this the color that it's kind of a light gray. And uh, to me, like projects show up well on that. It might be different than whenever you're filming. But yeah, I'll I'll see what we can do. That would be awesome. Just think about it. It's one of those things like when you're a, when you're a YouTuber, you think about that because things kind of mess with your camera. So not everybody yeah. needs a craft mat. Your mat is perfect because you can see the color so that if you do, like you said, want to use a tag and swipe and pick up the goodie, you can see where it's at. So I totally yeah. get that. True, true. But I, then, do we I, have I, any can, questions? Yeah, Ken. Um, Lori asked, uh, how easily does glue clean off the mat? Uh, it depends on what kind of glue it is. So um, hot glue, as soon as it cools, it pops right off. Uh, liquid adhesives, um, uh, like if they're water-based liquid adhesives, uh, you could just wash that off in the sink. You know, um, or if it's, it's still wet, you can wash it off with a spritz bottle and a paper towel. Uh, like acrylic paints or water-based glues, if they dry on there, I take mine to the sink and I wash it off, but it comes right off. Very easily, too, I should say. Very cool. And lots of people like May May's idea of a black mat. Oh, I started. Oh, really? okay. Yeah, I like that All idea, right. too. <laughs> um, Call it the May May, black, heard, the May, May craft mat. <laughs> yeah. Have you heard of Stick It? No. No. Okay. This. Who likes to die cut? Does everybody in the audience like beautiful die cuts? I think yeah. so. I know you do. So um, how often do you try to glue your die cuts in place with liquid adhesive and it's or like that little adhesive pen and it's kind of a mess? Uh, this is called Stick It and it's an adhesive that's especially formulated for die cutting. So it's really a micro thin layer of adhesive that floats between two very thin pieces of like release paper is what I'll call it because it's like what's on stickers. So to make this work, you simply remove one side of the release line or put this on your cardstock as, and then cut it as you normally would. And then on the back side of your cardstock, you've got another layer of, of stick it and you remove that release liner and then your 
dye already has adhesive all over it, oh. and then you just place it where you want it on your card or on your scrap of layout. That's super, great. It's, it's super nice to use. And it's fact, really if hard you, to get in the intricate places. Oh, yeah, like all the little scrolly dyes with all the curly cues and swirls. Those with the liquid adhesive are almost impossible to glue down without getting what I call glue boogers on your cardstock. So uh, stick it actually makes your die cut like a, like a beautiful swirly sticker because everything sticks to this, and it's permanent. Uh, you have about, it's repositionable for a few minutes, you know, but after that it's like, it's permanent. It's acid-free, it's archival, it's all the good stuff. In fact, if you want to see like a little bit more of a demo of it, uh, there's a video on my Facebook page, on my Facebook pages, where you can see exactly how it works. It's good stuff. Cool. Now, I know people are going to ask, will it go through our die-cutting machines like a Cricut or a Silhouette? Absolutely. It's awesome for your manual machines. It's awesome for your electronic machines. It's great with punches. If you want to use punches, you can you know, put it on your paper and then punch stuff out, and that sticks down. It's perfect for that. That's awesome. It doesn't change the uh, thickness of the cardstock at all. It uh, basically is just it's a micro-thin layer of adhesive uh, that gets applied to, and it's already on there whenever you cut it out, then, and it's fabulous. Cool. Any more questions? Any more questions? Uh, yeah, back to the mat. Somebody wanted to know, or several people asked, does the mat self-heal if it gets cut? You know what? I can't do that. I can't be everything. But uh, <laughs> So I'm going to say no, like it does cut, and if you poke a hole in it, it pokes a hole in it. But for all the other benefits and features, um, like it's that's kind of like, you know, like not the biggest uh, thing. So it's not a self-healing mat. It's not for quilting or something like that. But uh, for general crafting, for painting, for inking, for distressing, for any kind of wet media, it is the bomb diggity, I tell you. Well, everybody seems very impressed with the mat, and they seem to love uh, the stick it. So everybody really loves your products. We appreciate it. Oh, thank you for having me today. And I didn't even get onto these yet. I have uh, scrapbook papers that are gorgeous. This is, this is covered bridges. This is perfect for this time of year. And they're actually photographs of covered bridges. Most of them are around the Midwest. And um, I, I took some of the photographs myself. But look how beautiful those are. So for your, you know, for fall memories, these would be awesome. This are, they're great for week or for Thanksgiving. Those are cool. And, oh, look at that one. It's even like six uh, little postcards. And then the corresponding patterns on the back side are also very warm and vintage-y. They're actually inspired by uh, vintage lace and fabric patterns. Cool. Okay, now it's time for our Crafty Corner. Um, this is the part of the show where we do Crafty Corner. And each week we will showcase a craft and give you a full tutorial in a video. Uh, this week, the craft is being done by May May, and May May, what do you have for us this week? Well, I have something that I absolutely love at this time of year, and when we were talking about show themes and we talked about warm winter wishes, this is the first thing that came to my mind. I'm just going to show you a finished project first, and I'm going to talk about it. This is a little mug. You see the little mug? And inside this little bag is something called Russian or Friendship Tea. And I love this tea for this time of year. And it's perfect to make these little gifts to give away. So the Friendship Tea is made with several ingredients. But I'm going to show you the packaging because I found that a lot of times whenever I'm talking on my tutorials and some of you guys aren't from the United States, you may not know exactly what some of the products I'm talking about are. So I want to show you a couple of them. This one calls for Instant Tea. And this is what Instant Tea looks like. So wherever you are, it may look a little different. This is a Lipton version, and it's unsweetened. And it does need to be unsweetened, but the decaf is your, is your choice. I like to use decaf for it. And it also calls for Country Time Lemonade. Now, I don't think Ooh. you can get this in the UK. I think I've heard them say before that you can't get it, but it's just a lemonade powder lemonade drink, so whatever you have that will work. It calls for the astronaut's drink, Tang. They are, everybody remembers Tang, right? 
Now the recipe is going to be linked below because I have a whole tutorial for these projects I'm going to show you. So you'll be able to get the recipe in that video description. Ooh, almost dropped it. Okay, let me show you a couple more things. I like I tend to have a lot of Sunday school teachers and school teachers and friends that I need to give gifts to. And this Russian tea really fills the bill. Check this out. Little tag. That light is a little bit bright, but there's a little tag. And that was made with one of my stamp sets. And then check this out. See the tea in the little jar? And we have little fabric and a little ribbon. And I'll show you how to do all that in that tutorial. But this was today's craft, which I think is super cool. But i got to show you one more thing. So at Walmart, I found these guys. I'm going to hold this up where you can see what they are. These are those little single serving mini cups that you can put like dressing and stuff in. Love them. Found them in the regular old foil uh, storage bag Dixie cup aisle. And so you can put the Russian tea into the little container and it's the perfect amount for a mug of the Russian tea. And on the top I just used two circle punches and made a little decorative little top. So if you're having a Christmas party or a holiday get together, wouldn't these be cute like on a table or in a little bowl and people could just come up and get them? And you just use hot water. It's two tablespoons in um, hot water. And it also has cloves and cinnamon in it, which makes it the perfect. Like I even have seen it on the internet called wassail. Now this is not what we call wassail in the South. But some people have called it that for like a, a wintertime drink. So today's Crafty Corner is all about warm winter wishes. And so if you head over to my After This Is Over With, you can click in the description. And there will be a link to the tutorial where I show you the information about the um, Russian tea, and also we make those three projects I showed you together. So that way you get a step-by-step -step tutorial. It's kind of hard to do that here, so we want to do it that way. And each week we're going to do that. Each week when we have the Crafty Corner, there will be a full tutorial linked for you guys to head over and see it, so that way you're not trying to catch it on this live show. Now, I'm in charge of the secret word today. And we may not always do this this way, but because it's our first time to ever do this, we thought we'd say, this is the secret word. Are you ready? Get your pens and paper out. It is first, because this is our first show. So our secret word is first. And you're going to need that in order to that drawing to win the cool Ken Oliver products that he's given out today. Yeah, and there will be a link to where you can uh, check that out in the description. Uh, and it's a raffle copter. You have to put in the secret word and then also your email. And it starts at 1 p.m. after the show, and it goes until tomorrow at 1 p.m. It cuts it off. So don't hurt, you know, make sure every time we have this show that you have to watch the show. If you can't make it live, we understand that because uh, you're working and everything else. But watch it within the first 24 hours to get your secret code word. So after the show's over with, head over and um, click the link and then enter the contest. So Vinny, yep. this is the time of our show where we do crafty chat and we want to answer questions, um, talk to everybody out there because we want them to be a part of the show too. So just flood us with comments and conversation. Okay, so um, a few questions for Ken. Um, Gareth asked, what is Ken's favorite type of craft to do? You know, um, I love watercolor. I love watercoloring, and um, I love watercolor painting, and uh, and I like you know, like I love die cutting. I love uh, card making. But here's the, here's like a little project that kind of combines all that because it's a die cut leaf, uh, die cut sentiment, um, but I die cut watercolor paper to make this beautiful leaf. So um, I really I have spent most of my art life on watercolor. All right, cool. And another a viewer asked, how often do you issue um, new products or bring out new products? About once every six months. So uh, usually in January and in uh, July, around you know sometime in the summer. So around that those times. Uh, that's historically whenever our industry has. Uh, you know, done the releases, and so that's you know kind of we uh, followed suit on doing that, doing it that way. And last question was, um, if you were just starting out with your colors, which colors would you suggest that they try first? You know, uh, I would really suggest that you get the assortment that's called the Brights assortment uh, because it's your primary colors and your secondary colors. 
And um, whenever you're working with color and watercolor and color, you understand color theory, with those six colors, you can blend a lot of different colors. I'm making a craft project as we're talking here. I'm making a little, um, a little tiny card, oh, and it's really nice. I, I made it with a stencil that I used Color Burst on, and then a little card background, and voila, it's like a nice little card. Cool. Awesome. But yeah, to, to me, your primaries and secondary colors are the most important colors to start with because you can do the most with them and then build your assortment later with the, um, with the rich, warm fall colors. And you, you will not believe how gorgeous the colors that we're doing in January are. Oh, there's just, there's, I, 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 I'm about to bust out of my chair to tell you, and I can't. Oh, just a little sneak? Yeah, let it slip out. <laughs> I really I can't. I can't. Don't get him in trouble, guys. No, don't My get him in trouble. My viewers know what it's like to want to know because I tease them all the time. <laughs> so oh now I'm God. getting it back at me. <laughs> They're so beautiful. They're so beautiful. And Blitzy says they do have the Clicka ink pads individually. Oh, yeah, that's true. They do. The Click It ink pads are super cool. Once you get your uh, – anybody who tries this, like I get, I, I get messages on my Facebook pages all the time like, oh, my gosh, I just tried your Click It ink pads, and they're amazing. And uh, so, like, if you haven't tried this yet, you need it. You need it because look how thin it is, and it's really super easy to use. Any more questions, Vince? Uh, well, there was one other question, but Melody answered it herself, so um, I don't need to pass that I one. I headed over there to look. I couldn't help myself. You cheated. <laughs> what else you got? Comments? Conversation? Uh, everybody is just really excited about uh, Ken's products. It looks like a lot of people are afraid they're going to go broke. Um, yeah, maybe a lot of mad husbands out there after this is over with. But everybody seems to be really enjoying it and loving everything that we're doing. Uh, we did have but one you person make ask Christmas, um, yeah. if there was a Christmas possibility gifts. that one of you could do a tutorial uh, with the Stick It so they could all see how that works. Yeah, uh, Go to my uh, Facebook page. On my Facebook page, Ken Oliver Crafts, there is a video that has, an, and it's on my YouTube channel too, uh, Ken Oliver, uh, that shows you step-by-step step how to put Stick It on your cardstock, how to place your dice, how to cut it, and how to stick it. And it's on my YouTube channel, and you'd also find it on my Facebook page, Ken Oliver Crafts. Cool. Very good. Um, so let's see. What else do I see? Uh, let's see. Tammy wants to know, Maymay, how do you come up with so many different ideas? Um, oh, clawing and scratching. <laughs> it's really hard because I do three videos a week on my channel, and so sometimes and Vince will tell you I'll just be in a rut. And here's what I found. You can flood yourself with too much information sometimes. Like you can go to Pinterest and go out there and look at other ideas. And I have found that if I will just look around my own home and see a need, I can usually get creative because, you know, necessity is the mother of invention. So I can be like, you know, this hallway needs some color or um, this table needs something. And I can kind of be inspired to make something for that. And a lot of times it's viewer submissions, believe it or not. I have so many viewers that will say, we want to see how to do this, we want to see how to do that. And I love to make what you guys want to see because then I feel like I'm giving, you know, I know Melody feels that way too. We want to do what you guys want to see. So um, that's a big part of it. But I think we can bog ourselves down with the create, have to be creative, have to be creative. Sometimes just make a card and get your mojo going. And um, that's how I do it. Or, and I also get a lot of ideas, and people think this is crazy, but I bet Ken and Melody would agree. I get a lot of ideas and dreams, a lot of ideas through dreams. Which, yeah. Yep. That just comes to you sometimes when your uh, your mind works on something in your subconscious while you're sleeping. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and sometimes I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm just going to play. Like, I just released a video the other day on the color burst of just me playing with them and experimenting with them with some gesso and some paste and stuff and I had no idea what I was going to do until it was done. <laughs> I was just mixing some paints and some colors and putting them in my journal and that sometimes it's just playing. 
Now, Kim asked, uh, is there a time where uh, either May May or Melody or Ken, if you guys ever have to force yourselves to be creative? I, for me, it just comes naturally. But if I get into a creative block, which that has happened before, if I just clean up my craft room or look through my supplies, then it comes back instantly because I find stuff I forgot I had. And I, I sometimes, I sometimes have to force myself. I've been, known, I've been known to have to force myself to do something, especially since I've started YouTube. And this may be behind the curtain too much, but if I'm doing certain projects that I know I want to do, but the setup for that project to film it is so overwhelming that I will procrastinate and I have yes. to eventually force myself to yeah. do it. Like wreaths are really bad like that because for me to do a wreath, and people love wreath videos, but for me to do them, I have to basically break my kitchen down and reset it up with lights and backgrounds and all this good stuff because I don't have the room in my craft room. So a lot of times I'll put that off until the very last second. So I do sometimes have to force myself to do some things. And that happened to me recently. May May invited me to be in a collab video with the Countdown to Christmas. And I was like four days late. Cause, but I had planned for like three weeks. <laughs> and I could not think of what to do. I've never done a video on that. So I just looked in Pinterest and looked all over for Countdown. I wanted to do something I haven't seen. But so I finally when I decided to do what I wanted to do, I really wanted to do it, but it took me so long to do because I had to make 24 of these things, the little star thing, and I, I think that was my second to last video, but it took much longer than I thought it was going to take. I, but I, was, I, really happy with it, but I was forced to think of what to do. I would have never have done that video if it wasn't for May May. I kind of do what May May does. If I get a creative block, I look through um, some supplies, or I look around the house. What do I need? What do I need to do? Uh, the other thing I like to do when I get a creative block is really go outside and go for a walk and look to nature because nature makes no mistakes. You'll be inspired by a color palette or by a cloud or by something that you see outside, a butterfly that's going to tick an idea in your head and get you back on track. But for me, like the actual activity of getting up and going outside and kind of going for a walk recenters my brain and gets me back in the creative mm -hmm. mode. That was a great question. What else, Vince? Um, let's see. Jane wanted to know um, how do you find the time to do so many so many videos a week? Uh, she says she struggles to just get one done. Well, this is now my full-time job, so um, I just have to make time. It's, it's very overwhelming sometimes. It really is to have to do, and I actually do four videos a week because I do three. I do Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Then on Tuesday, I do my scripture art journaling. So it can be very daunting. It really can. But I love doing it, and I love interacting with the community. And I love, too, just like last Friday, I couldn't do a video because of my voice, which is hanging in really good. Fingers crossed it'll stick around. But I couldn't do a video. So when I posted that I couldn't do it, everybody's so supportive and they understand. So I don't feel the pressure of, from my community, I don't feel, oh my gosh, you didn't get a video done today. You know, they understand. And I appreciate that too because sometimes I can't do, I can't get them all done. But time scheduling, which I'm really bad about, but I'm trying to be better. Um, the family is supportive, which helps. Vince knows if I have to go in the craft room, I just have to go in the craft room. And um, it being full time helps. If you have a job, when I had a job outside the home, there's no way I could keep up the schedule I keep up now. Well, we're almost out of time. We're down to two more minutes. So, ladies, uh, any closing comments or thoughts? I'm going to my notes. <laughs> we want to thank everybody for coming today and a huge thank you to Ken Oliver we had so much fun and you showed us so many different things and a bunch of new products and a bunch of giveaways that was so right. awesome of you um, and remember our next show will be November 16th on my channel so after this is after we're done with this video, I'm going to make that video public. So you can go to my YouTube channel, Mel youtube.com slash Melody Lane, and I will show you, or you can see my upcoming live videos, and then you can click a reminder. And also join our Facebook group, and we'll put a link to all this stuff in our Facebook group too. 
Um, and our special guest that time will be Gina K from Gina K Designs. And I also want to remind you, every, anyone who's watching, if you guys know somebody who wants to be on the show or if somebody's watching wants to be on our show as a special guest or have ideas, you can email us at thiscraftylifelive at gmail.com. So if you want to get in touch with us, you can always email us. Hey, Melody, there was one suggestion. Andrea suggested uh, when it comes to the hotels for places yeah. to do your um, crop get together, uh -huh. that maybe if you contacted the hotel where you're currently doing it and see if they have um, hotels in other locations they that don't. give you the same type of deal that you're getting with them. Yeah. Um, and of course, they she suggested Virginia. <laughs> we tried that, and they don't. But I have been on the phone and online looking because uh, we sent out a survey of where people want us, and the most people were in Tennessee and Texas. So we've been trying. We are we are going to have a meet and greet in California. I think the sixteenth. It is uh, the near Anaheim. We're going to go to Cha, the Craft and Hobby Association. Ken will be there too. Ken Oliver, mm -hmm. and then the next weekend we're going to have a meet and greet with the Sweet Stamp Shop also. All right, ladies, well, our time is up. It is now uh, 12.01 Central Time. So any last Thank words? You, guys. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, Ken. And thank you, Maymay, and thank you, Vince. Thanks, Vinny. No problem. We had a great time. See you guys in, uh, in two weeks. See you Bye, -bye. Later. Thanks again. Bye guys. Bye, everyone. Bye-bye.